you know, what you know about that Poyo Bowl. Poyo Bowl right there. What you know about that. Welcome. Anyone who's on, say shalom. That way I know what's up. I gotta figure out how to know who's on or who's watching or what. It used to have like a little eyeball, but I don't know. It doesn't have it. Maybe I'm not looking in the right spot. For two more people, two more people to get on, then we'll begin. See you guys had a good day. Shalom. We hungry for the word. That's what I'm talking about. We're about to get into the word too. Praise the Almighty. Shalom. We're about to get into the word. Had a rush, but. Thank the Almighty Feast of Tabernacle Day 6. Waiting for um, two more people, they late, to get on, and then we'll get started. In the meantime, you could turn to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. And then uh, take it from there. I think you guys are going to like this, especially because what just happened as I was getting the scriptures for you today. Praise the Almighty. Lines right up with the testimony. Oh. We'll give it one more minute, and then, hey, a bird in the hand beats two in the bush, so these two sisters are late again, then we'll just talk to them. I'll just talk trash when they get on. Oh, you guys doing all right? Good looking out, Benito. Have your have your Bible ready. You know how we do. Me and Benito had like a nice little Bible study last, what they call Sunday. It was a blessing. All right, late, late. Couture. So, welcome to Feast of Tabernacle, day six. One more day, tomorrow's the feast. I thank the Almighty, because when we, when we were all in San Diego at the time, we met up seven days straight. It was a blessing, because you deal with sinners, and you get to come to be with the people of the Most High, and you get to eat seven days straight, feast, sing songs, and just be with the people of the Most High. It's weird, because... False churches, they're like, oh, man, I got to go to service seven days. But when you love the people of the Most High, it's a blessing. So, praise Almighty. Where's uh, Sister Parak Keturah? Where's she at? Say shalom when you get on. So, I thank the Almighty for the feast days. Also, 
some of them, some of it is kind of being a living sacrifice. Let me lift this back up. Because on some aspects of the feast, like Day of Atonement, you humble yourself and you're fasting. And, um, you know, it's it's not pleasurable to the flesh. Also, too, it shows the Almighty that we put his days before making money. You know, and money's not our God. You know, and we take necessary days off. Obviously, you know, today at sunset starts day seven. So, you know, I won't be going to work. Service will be tomorrow at 1030. Normal, uh, normal time, normal Sabbath time. So we'll have service. So, okay, definitely, uh, you late eating while you teach. I wasn't eating while I was teaching. I was waiting. I load up five minutes early and wait for people to get on before I start the scriptures. So, um, definitely welcome to true Hebrews United, our Lord Yeshua, the she beloved holiness instructor, disciple, sure, just talking about again to the book as usual. Definitely give all honor to the Almighty through his son, Yeshua Mashiach, all the apostles, the prophets, the bishops, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, the deacons across the whole planet, teaching this word, persuading people to uh, repent from sins and get baptized. All the brothers and sisters across the whole planet, keeping his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, his precepts, and his ways. All the people on the Facebook and the YouTube that share, like, follow, and subscribe, and uh, comment and call. I appreciate you guys. Whether you agree or disagree, you can always reach me, 619-501-1375. So I definitely thank you. I appreciate you guys. So today, lesson actually have more scriptures than I wanted. I try to keep in between shorter since we meet all seven days. And then obviously normal Sabbath or high Sabbath is full on service. But I want to talk to you about the importance of reading, even though I always deal with this all the time. But how the Almighty will talk to you. And I'll give my testimonies and I hope you guys have some testimonies you could give because you might have a story how you got in a car accident and you almost fell off a cliff and you didn't. And everyone has a testimony how the Almighty provides. But if you guys ever have some testimonies how the Almighty spoke to you through his word, uh, definitely share. Uh, and I'm not saying that something that you read, you know. You know, there is a way that seemeth right unto the man, but the end thereof is death. Yes, this is a scripture and it's easily understood. But uh, I'm going to give you two examples and I'm going to show you how the Almighty just gave me something just right now. Watch. I didn't even know that. It all connected. And I'll show you that my last scriptures. But so we're going to read it uh, in the book of Exodus. Go to Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16. And this is when I was very young in, in the Almighty. Uh, probably when I was probably still at the false church, I was young and almighty, you know, and you're reading your Bible, you know, casually doing your thing. Exodus chapter 16, verse 14, Exodus chapter 16, verse 14, and says, and when the dew that, um, that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing as a small as a hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wits not what it was what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Almighty have given to you to eat. So when I read this and I was young in the Almighty, I was praying like probably almost every day, every other day, Almighty, I want to know what manna tastes like. Almighty, I want to know what manna tastes like. Almighty, I want to know what manna tastes like. And the Almighty spoke to me. And uh, he showed me something and it, it was out of nowhere, but I'm going to show you the scriptures first. And the Almighty spoke to me when I kept praying for manna. Go ahead and give me uh, John chapter 6, John chapter 6, verse 30. Few times where I say, thus saith the Lord or the Almighty spoke to me because I don't ever, I'd be real careful to speak on the Almighty's behalf. I just teach the word and I know I'm right. I don't come off like a prophet. The Almighty does speak to me. I do say so, but you'll you'll run across a lot. The Almighty spoke to me today and the Almighty showed me this and the Almighty said this. And I'll be real careful saying that stuff, especially too. don't be a false accuser blaming everything on the devil. The Almighty's attacking my finances. I mean, the devil's attacking my finances. You keep calling in sick. How is he talking? You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes they blame the devil for anything. You give the devil too much credit. But John chapter six, 
We're going to start at verse 30, John chapter 6, verse 30. And let's get it. And they said, therefore, unto him, What sign sheweth thou then that we may see and believe what thou, thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, and it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Yeshua said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of the Almighty is he that cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Yeshua said unto him, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me sh shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. One more scripture. John chapter 14, verse 15 and 16. John chapter 14, same book, verse 15 and 16. Let's get it. I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because he seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So the Almighty showed me I should be praying for the Holy Ghost. I spent all this time praying for manna when I was young in my walk in the Most High. Almighty, I want to know what manna Almighty, I want to know what manna. Almighty, I want to know what manna is. I want to know what manna tastes like. You know, you're young. You come to the Almighty. You read the scriptures. Like, Almighty, I'm believing you could let me try manna. But I didn't have the spirit. And so he had to show me. Not through, oh, I just read it one day and I got it. He showed me through the word. He spoke. This is why I say read. Because he could speak to you through his word. And so he said, man, you're praying for the wrong bread. You're praying for the wrong thing. You should be praying for the Holy Spirit. And I was like, oh, man, I got it. And I was like, almighty, you're right, man. You know, pray that you give me the spirit. Give me the spirit. I still want to know what man tastes like, though, almighty. You know, you still, you know, I still do. But, you know, the almighty showed me, you know, through his word, you know, that he's real. And that, hey, you know what? This is how I talk to you. This is how I show you, son. This, you're misguided. You're misdirected. They didn't have the spirit. They, it says in the Old Testament, they cannot be made uh, perfect because we're under a better covenant and under better promises. They didn't have the spirit as a heat keeper. You're, you're asking and praying for the wrong bread, you know. And so I'm going to give you another example. Let's go to First Kings. And I'll read some of these comments as we go down. First Kings, while you guys get that, I'm going to read some of the comments. Chapter 2, First Kings chapter 2. All right, cool. First Kings chapter two. We're going to start at verse one. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to read the whole chapter on purpose. First Kings chapter two. You guys ready? We'll start at verse actually. We'll start at, yeah, we'll start at verse one. First Kings That first Kings, yeah. Chapter two. Oh, Second Kings. I'm sorry about that. This is Second Kings. No, but. Bear with me. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. That'll be uh First Kings chapter six. First Kings chapter six. My bad. I actually miss miswrote it. First Kings chapter six, started at verse one. First Kings chapter six, verse one. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel have came out of the land. The king of Egypt, uh, in the fourth year, Solomon reigned over Israel in the second month, which is the second month. He began to build the house of the almighty. 
And the house which the King Solomon built for the Almighty, the length thereof was three score cubics. A cubic was an arm length, so three score, score is 20, so 62 cubics, 62 uh, uh, cubics long. And so roughly a cubic is two feet or 18 inches, rough estimate. And the bread if thereof was 20 cubics, the height thereof was 30 cubics, the porch before the temple of the house, 20 cubics the, was the length thereof, according to the bread of the house, and 10 cubics was the bread thereof before the house. For the house he made windows and narrow lights, and against the wall of the house he built chambers round about, and against the walls of the house round about, both of the temple and of the oracle, and he made chambers round about. And the nethermost chamber was five cubics broad, and the middle was six cubics broad, and the third was seven cubics broad, for without was and the wall of the house made with narrow rests round about, and the beams should not be fastened in, uh, fastened in the walls of the house. And the house, when it was in building, was built in, uh, of stone, uh, made ready before it was brought there. So there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron in the house while it was building. The door of the middle chamber was in the right side of the house, and they went up with the window of the stairs into the middle chamber, and out of the middle chamber into the third. So he built the house and finished it, and he covered the house with beams and boards of cedar. And then he built the chambers against all the house, five cubits high, and rested on the house with timber of cedar. And the word of the Almighty came unto Solomon, saying, Concerning the house which thou art building, if thou wilt walk in my statue and execute my judgment and keep my commandments and walk in them, then I will perform the word uh, with uh, thee which I have spake to David thy father and i will dwell among the children of israel and i will not forsake my people israel so solomon built the house and finished it and he built the walls of the house within the boards of cedar both the floor of the house and the walls of the ceiling and the covered them with the inside with wood and covered the floor and the house with the planks of fir and he built 20 cubics of the size of the house both of the floor and the walls with the boards of cedars and he built them for it within and even the oracle even the most holy place and the house that is the temple before it was 40 cubics and the cedar of the house within was carved with knops and with open flowers and with cedar and there was no stone seen and the oracle had prepared the house within and he set the ark of the covenant of the almighty and the oracle in the fore part was 20 cubics in length and 20 cubics in breadth and 20 cubics in height and breadth is the width by the way there uh, thereof and he overlaid it with pure gold and so he covered the altar uh, which was of cedar and Solomon overlaid the house within uh, within with pure gold and he made the partition by the chains and the golds before the altar and he overlaid it with gold and the whole house he overlaid it with gold until he had finished all the house also uh, uh, also the whole altar that was by the oracle he overlaid with gold within the oracle he made two cherubims of olive trees each ten cubics high the five cubics on the one of uh, uh, was the one wing of the cherub and five cubics was the other wing of the cherub for the uttermost part of the one wing was the uttermost part of the other were 10, uh, 10 cubics. And then the other cherub was 10 cubics. Both of the cherubs were of the measure of one size. The height of the one cubic was 10 cubics. So it was of the other cubic and he set the cherubims within the inner house and they stretched forth their wings of the cherubim so that the wings of one touched the uh, uh touch the one wall and the wing of the other cherubim touched the other wall and their wings touched one another in the midst of the house and he overlaid the cherubims with gold and he carved all the walls of the house round about with carved figures of the cherubims and the palm trees and the open flowers within and without and the floor of the house he overlaid it with gold and with uh, within and without and from the entering of the oracle he made the doors of the olive and the lintel and the side posts which were the fifth part of the wall two doors also were of the olive tree and he carved them them the carvings of cherubims and palm trees and open flowers and overlaid them with gold and he spread gold upon the cherubims and upon the palm trees so also he made the door of the temple and the post of the olive tree and the fourth part of the wall and the two doors were of the door with the folding or the two leaves of the other door with the folding and he carved thereof the cherubims and the palm trees and he opened the flowers and covered them within the gold fitted upon the carved work and he built the inner court with the three rows and he hewed and the rows of cedar beams in the first year was the foundation of the house uh, of the Almighty laid in the month of Ziph. And the eleventh year in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, uh, was the house finished throughout all the parts according to all the fashions. So, so was the seven years in the building it. So, that was a pretty long-winded chapter. And I read that on purpose because when I was reading that, 
as well as when they built the tabernacle in the wilderness with Moses. One day I was praying. I was like, oh, mighty. Why do you have us read this? This doesn't even pertain to us. Why? What is it so important that they kept all the measurements for the house? What? And, you know, I didn't get it. I was like, Almighty, give me understanding. Why? Because we know all scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for instruction of righteousness, that a man of God may be uh, furnished, uh, may be, man of God may be perfect, 30 furnished unto all good works. That's in First Timothy, by the way. And so we know that the, all the scriptures, anything, it says if we wrote everything that the all, uh, Yeshua did, the world... The, the world cannot contain the books, but all things were written that we might believe. So everything in here was written for we might believe even when we read the temple. And so I was like, oh, you got to give me understanding. You got to give me understanding on that. And so he took me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And this was on a walk. This was on a walk. Um, I was walking to the Almighty, praying to the Most High. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And you, I'm pretty sure when you guys read Numbers, it's a long-winded book. It's just dealing with numbers. Um, it's, a t uh, it's, uh, it's a less entertaining book, less stimulating book. And you got to remember, this has a purpose for our growth. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we're going to deal with 18. It says, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth without of the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own soul. That's right. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the raw Akadish, which is in you, which ye have of the Most High, and you are not your own. For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify the most high in your in your uh in your body and in your spirit, which are the most high. And so you see how it says also let everything be done in decency and in order. So we see how orderly and everything was cut to size, and how exact and how perfect Solomon made that house, how perfect Moses made the tabernacle. And so if we're the temple. And he's real strict and real adamant and real orderly and how he wanted his stuff built. That's how we need to live. And so I was like, oh, I got it. I got it, almighty. Thank you. And these are walking with the almighty. And this is why I push reading so hard because the almighty can speak to you. And it won't even be why you because you could read a scripture 15 times. And then two years later, the almighty would click and give you understanding of that scripture. But if you don't read, you could pray all you want, but nothing comes back to you. If you're expecting to get an audible voice, if you're expecting to get a burning bush all the time, that that's probably not going to happen. I heard uh, an angel one time in my life. I, we might have entertained under angels because it says, be careful who you entertain for you entertain angels unaware. I was reading in my mom's house and I was reading the Bible when I was real fresh. And I was still at a false church. And I was reading and I tried to finish. I think I wanted to finish this last chapter and I kept dozing off. But I wanted to finish this last chapter. And I was the only person in this uh, chapter. And he and the, and the word came to me and said, keep reading. You have work to do. And I stood up. I heard a voice and I walked around the house and no one was in my house. And this was when I first came. I was still at a false church. It said, clear as day. Keep reading. You have work to do. And I was like. That was only one time in my life I actually heard an audible voice from the Most High. I, it was an angel, more likely. But from then on, I mean, had I known, I didn't know he was going to lead me to go this route, this direction at that time. But the majority of the time you pray, you're not going to, I mean, you might get visions and dreams, but that's not every day and that's not every time you pray. The majority of times I've got spoken to was through his word. And it wasn't while I was reading is he just gave me revelation on it. And I'm going to prove that right now, because while I was just studying this, almighty just gave me something. This is something I just got. This is fresh. You guys ready? Let me know if you're ready for something fresh. All right, cool. First Corinthians chapter six. All right. So we're dealing with the temple. So I'm getting the scripture and I understand, OK, this is why it's important for us to understand how orderly, how exact he wanted his temple, how exact. He wanted uh, 
the tabernacle, when you read the tabernacle, everything had to be exact measurements, everything, how many uh, 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 rings you had to put the curtains together. He, he, hey, it had to be perfect, exactly according to how the Almighty wanted. And your lifestyle needs to be exactly according to how the Almighty, if you're his temple, you need to be just as strict as what we just read. These 38 verses we just read and you got long winded because I was long winded just reading it out loud. So I know when you're reading at home, you're probably like, man, this is not an entertaining chapter, but you got to press through. Let me show you something. Ezekiel. Chapter eight. Ezekiel, chapter eight. Praise the almighty. You guys there? Everyone still there? That's why I thank the Almighty. You know, if you be faithful, he'll give it to you. Ezekiel chapter 8. We're going to start at verse 3. I want you guys to pay attention. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 3. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 3. And he put forth the form of his hand, and he took me by the lock of my head, because, you know, they was Hebrews, so they wore dreadlocks. But anyways, and my head and the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heavens and brought me the vision of the most high to Jerusalem and to the door of the inner gate that he uh, looked towards the north. Wherefore was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoked to jealousy. And this is the almighty is a jealous almighty, right? Look what he said. And behold, the glory of the almighty of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw on the plain. Then he said he unto me, son of man, lift up thy eyes now towards the north so i lifted up my eyes in the way towards the north and behold northward at the gate of the altar an image of jealousy in the entry a graven image and he said furthermore unto me son of man see if thou what they do even these great abominations that the house of the israel commit uh, committeth there that i should go far from my sanctuary but turn thee yet again and thou shalt see greater so they had in front of the altar they had graven images let's keep going and he brought me to the door of the court and we just read about him building the temple right let's keep going and when we look and behold a hole in the wall then he said unto me son of man dig now in the wall and when i digged in the wall behold a door and he said unto me go in and behold the wicked abomination that they do here so i went in and i saw and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all idols of the house of Israel portrayed on the walls round about. So they had this on the walls round about in the temple. Let's keep going. And there stood before 70 men of the angel, ancients of the house. And in the midst of them stood Jezaniah and the son of Shephan with every man a censer in his hand and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said unto me, son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chamber of his imagery. For they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath uh, forsaken the earth. And he said also unto me, so they're burning incense unto false gods. Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than they do. And then he brought me into the door of the gates of the Lord's house, which is towards the north. And behold, there sat a woman weeping for Tazmaz. So she's in the house of the Most High, praying to a false god. Let's keep going. Then said he unto me, Has thou seen this? O son of man, turn thee yet again, and then thou see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, behold, the porch of the altar were about five and twenty men and their backs were towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east that they shall worship the sun towards the east. So they're in the temple and they're praying towards the sun. They're praying to a sun God, a deity in the temple. Let's keep going. Then he said unto me, Has thou seen this, O son of man? Is It is a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit abominations which they commit here. For they have filled the land with violence, and they have returned to, uh, returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they have put the branch in their nose. Therefore, I will deal in my fury. My eyes shall not spare. I want you to pay attention. Therefore, I will deal in my fury. My eyes shall not spare. Will I, I will I have pity and uh, neither will I have pity and though they cry in my ears with a loud voice yet I will not hear them this is why when people are on their deathbed and they want to cry to the most high and you never know they might be saved he said I will pour out my fury and when they cry unto me I'm not even going to hear it when they got terminal cancer or when they're on their deathbed and they lived a life of sin and they told people they didn't want to serve the Almighty. And they know that at any time now, 
the life is going to get sucked out of their body. And there's a chance that there is a hell. There's a chance that there is a lake of fire. And now, an hour before they die, they want to cry out to the Almighty and have mercy. As you spend your whole life in sin. And he said, guess what? When you cry. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. But keep in note of that, because I just got that right now, right? So they're defiling the temple of the Most High. We just read in Second Kings, First Kings chapter 6 about how long it took them, it took them seven years to build the temple, and they just defiled the temple of the Most High. So let's see what happens to this temple. Give me Jeremiah chapter 52. These three scriptures I just got like right now, right now. So praise the Almighty. While I was getting the other scriptures for you. Jeremiah 52. And this is why I say it's always good to study because the Almighty, see, the Almighty just gave me more revelation. I just became a stronger teacher today because the Almighty just gave me these scriptures or just link these scriptures together. Let's keep going. Jeremiah 52. Let's start at verse 1. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hanra, the daughter of Jeremiah of Limna. And he did that which is evil in the eyes of the Almighty, according to all that Jehoiakim have done. For through the anger of the Lord it came to pass that Jerusalem and Judah till he had cast them out from his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign in the tenth month and the tenth day of the month that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and his army against Jerusalem and pinched against it, and they built forts round about. So they, so the city was besieged in the eleventh year of the king of Zedekiah. In the fourth month and the ninth day of the month, the famine was so sore in the city that there was no bread for the people in the land. Then the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled and went forth out of the city by night by the way of the gate between the walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans, which were by the city round about, and they that went by the way of the plain. But the, uh, the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook Zedekiah and his army in the plains of Jericho, and all his army were scattered from him. Then they took the king and carried him up into the uh, carried him up unto the king of Babylon to Rimah and the land of Hema, where he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew his sons before his eyes, and he, and he slew also the princes of Judah. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and the king of Babylon bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison to the day of his death. And in the fifth month, on the tenth day of the month, which the nineteenth year, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came, uh, with Nezaradon, captain of the guard, to serve the king of Babylon unto Jerusalem. And they burned. They burned the house of the Almighty and the king's house, houses of Jerusalem and the houses of great man, and he burned them with fire. We read in Ezekiel that they was committing abominations. They defiled the temple. Solomon built it. They defiled the temple. So guess what happened? The Almighty got that temple, his own temple, his own sanctuary, and he destroyed it. He destroyed it because they defiled it. So we read about the temple, and then we see that we're the temple. So what happens when you defile your temple? What will he do to you? Because he destroyed his. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of the Most High, and that the Spirit of the Almighty dwelleth in you? And some people that don't got the Spirit think that this applies to them. If you're not repenting, you're not baptized, you haven't repented, got baptized, you don't got no Spirit. So this scripture don't even apply to you. But he's talking about the people that's actually serving the Most High. And the Spirit of the Almighty dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of the Almighty, him shall God destroy. For the temple of the Almighty is holy, which temple ye are. The temple got built by Solomon and Ezekiel. See, look what they're doing to my temple that I have to go far from it. It says, I'm going to destroy them. And when they cry unto me, I will not hear. And so now it says, you're the temple of the Most High. And if you defile it, guess what? 
just like he destroyed his, he's going to destroy you. And guess what? When he starts destroying you and you cry loud unto the almighty, guess what he said he ain't going to do? He ain't going to hear you. So praise the almighty. I thank the almighty. He just gave me that. He just connected those scriptures. But um, this is the importance of reading. Hopefully this was beneficial to you. Always study. Show yourself approved. The almighty will speak to you a lot if you read this word. Always get that word in you. So hopefully that was a blessing to you as it was to me. Okay, I see what you did there. Okay, cool, cool. Amen. With all that said, being done, get ready for tomorrow. Feast uh, the last day of the feast tomorrow, uh, 1030 my time. So I'm Pacific and whatnot. So I might be three hours or two hours or one hour uh, behind you guys. So 1030 Pacific time. We'll be ready. With all that said, being done, keep standing. Joe Drop Standards. Give them all a mighty hand clap. Shalom.